It is Claire here, back again with another talking video. I truly am sorry. It has been so rainy the last couple weeks here, and also I've been uh, slowly bringing back my horse Owen into work as he just got surgery, and it's just, there's not much I can film with him at the moment. Lots of fun stuff coming soon. We're gonna start showing and going cross country this month and it's gonna be really fun. But that all doesn't start up for another week or so. So here I am with another talking video again. So the video I'm doing today is tips on starting a successful equestrian YouTube. This also can apply to not equestrian people. Some of it does, some of it doesn't. But this is just from my personal experience as I started, I did, I did this on my own. I had no idea how to do anything YouTube related. I had no idea what it was. I had no idea how to film videos. I had no idea how to edit them. I didn't know how to upload them. I, I just didn't know. And so I kind of had to figure these things out for myself. So um, I figured I'd share these with you guys so you don't have to go through the struggle that I did and you don't have to start out with crappy videos <laughs> like I did. So the very first thing I would recommend, you know, starting from the beginning of like just creating your channel, blah, 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 channel in general is creating like a fun and unique name. Um, my name isn't that like fun or unique, you know, Claire Venting, but it's, it's just my first name and then the sport that I do. Which isn't very creative and lots of other people do it, however, I had already had an Instagram at the time with that name and so I wanted to just keep it all the same. So get creative, be unique, be you, give everyone a little taste of your channel because that's the first thing they see is your channel name. The second thing they see is your profile picture. So make sure you pick out a cute, also high quality, you know, you don't want it to be blurry or dark or something, you want to make sure people can see it. Because you're it kind of reflects your channel if if you have a low quality profile picture people are going to assume that your videos are going to be low quality also um, make sure it's interesting or cute or, or whatnot and just kind of reflects what your channel is going to be basically give everyone a taste of what your channel is going to be about and that also goes along with your cover photo same thing okay so for your bio or your channel description whatever you want to call it Mine's pretty bland. Um, it wasn't at first because, you know, people didn't know me and stuff. Now it's just kind of telling everyone everything about me. I don't, know, I don't remember what my bio is. I might put a little screenshot of it up here. I honestly don't know what it is at the moment. <laughs> but um, just tell people about you. Tell people about what your channel's gonna be, about your horses and all those things. Be cute, be unique, be funny, you know. You're trying to draw people in to watch your videos and subscribe to your channel. So don't don't strive to be someone else. Don't you know try to be someone you're not. But show people who you are. Put it out there. Let people know. The next thing, start filming and posting videos. Just you just have to start because these things take a lot of time. And I really wish I would have started sooner because you know. But whatever. It's just, you you know, you got to post videos. And with every video you post, you get a little bit more interest. You get a little bit more views. You get a little bit more subscribers. And if you're not putting out content, nothing's going to happen. Your channel's not going to be anything. So really make sure that just just start. Just jump into it. And you can learn along the way as well. This first, Your first step is watching this video. Now start posting videos and start working and start creating your your brand or your, you know, Create yourself in video form. Yeah. So for your first couple of videos, um, I kind of what I did was I picked some like video ideas that I liked or that were popular at the time, um, just to get yourself out there. Like make sure that you at least at first, if you want to get noticed, which I mean, of course you don't have to, but start making videos that are very popular and that people are going to type into YouTube and search because they want to watch and then your video will pop up along with multiple others I assume and people will click on it. You just, 
um, like I think one of the very first ones I did that got popular was my boyfriend tax up my horse. Those videos, there weren't a lot of them, but the few that I found on YouTube were very, very popular. And this was also something that I was like, I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this, so why not, you know? Um, people like barn vlogs, people like show vlogs, uh, meet my new horse, all about my horse, you know, just stuff like that. Think of something that you would want to watch and make it. Okay, the next big, big, big thing is create high quality content in every aspect of the word. So there's a lot of little bullet points in this one. So the first step is filming with a good camera and I am really bad right now because if you guys can't tell I'm like trying to sit sideways because my screen has a little dot on it for some reason. I cleaned my lens, it's like some scratch or something on the inside, I don't know. But I'm going to scooch over here so you guys can't see that. And I don't know, I'm going to have to take my camera to get fixed or buy a new lens or buy a new camera or something. I don't know. But the camera I use for vlogging is, um, the camera I'm using right now is a Sony Alpha 5000 or Sony A5000. I also use my Canon 60D. For filming, I don't do it very often because the focusing is really bad. I also do film some videos with my iPhone. The, you guys can probably tell which videos I film with my phone because they're not as high quality. But most iPhones are, are pretty decent if you use the right editing and the right uploading and all that stuff, which I'll talk about soon. You also want good lighting. I film like all of my videos during the day and I also use a little fake ring light here. Let me show you. Hold up. Meow. Right there. So uh, this is what is just like a really cheap one I bought off of Amazon. It's a newer. I will link that in the description of the video. There are really expensive ones. There are not so expensive ones. Honestly, it's light. A light is a light. And it, what it no matter what it is, it's going to help. I definitely did not start out with this. I started just with natural lighting. I'm filming in front of three giant windows. Um, and I, I typically film my videos with natural lighting. Some of my videos, the lighting isn't so great, but the better the lighting, the better the quality, the better the video. Next, you need a tripod to hold your camera or set your camera down on something because if you're like holding your camera, like facing you while you're talking, you'll, you'll shake a lot and the video will be shaky and it won't be that good. Uh, I definitely started out doing that and it was rough. So I bought a tripod as quickly as possible. There are a couple times where like I'll go to the barn to film something and I'll forget my tripod. So I'll have to like set it on something and get creative. Just as long um, as you're not holding it the whole time because people get really annoyed if it's really shaky. And then also make sure your video is edited very well. The editing software I use is called iMovie. I use it on my MacBook to edit videos I film with my cameras. And then the videos I film on my phone, I also edit on iMovie. It's a free app in the App Store, so you can get it on your phone and you can edit videos on your phone through it. It's really simple, it's really easy, but also there's a lot of creativity you can get with it. So I really like iMovie. I know there's more expensive, there's way better editing software than that, but the simpler the better for me, honestly, because if it was too, like extravagant, I would get confused and my videos would get sloppy. <laughs> okay, I'm no expert, but I'm doing my best. While you're editing, try to cut out as many ums or, you know, just little phrases that you tend to repeat a lot, which I do all the time and I edit them out. And I'm getting better because it makes editing so much shorter if you've got your talking down, which... I still don't, but I'm getting better at it, so try not to say a lot of ums, and if you do, just cut them out during editing. It's super easy, it's simple. Cut out long pauses because nobody likes to sit here and listen to somebody talk for like five hours and you're like pausing between every sentence. So cut those out, keep it simple, keep it sweet. Make sure your audio does not get neglected. You want to make sure that people can hear you you know, make sure that mu your music's not too loud, your music's not too quiet, your voice isn't too quiet, um, which I still struggle with sometimes, but you can't make everybody happy, and when I'm going through it, editing it, it's it works for me, and so then I upload it. But that's, I mean, that's the best you can do. 
as long as you know you watch it through and you can hear yourself and you're not like oh my gosh the music's too loud or oh my gosh my voice is too loud you can't hear me and especially with the equestrian youtube channels you're filming outside a lot which the wind can be annoying so try to make sure that the days you're going to go out and film a video it's not going to be too windy otherwise you're just going to get a bunch of wind instead of people being able to hear you talk okay the next thing is just be yourself. It can be nerve wracking and awkward and weird to just sit here and talk to a camera for like 20 minutes. It gets easier, I promise. And it, it's still really hard for me. I'm still like, because most of the time I'm, I'm teaching, I'm trying to um, educate people in my talking videos. So I talk like, oh, professional and, ooh, and boring. So I'm still not the best at that, but just try to be yourself. Try not to be boring. Try not to be monotone. And you know, you joke around every once in a while, which most of the time my videos are really long and I have a lot of stuff to pack into my videos. So then I have to talk really fast and then I can't joke and then I have to be serious and, <sighs> but I try. Also, I'm very sarcastic. If you are a very sarcastic person like me, YouTube is tough because any ounce of sarcasm you put into your video, there will be people that will not get it. Like, I think the video I posted of, you know, I have to sell my horse. I was talking about me having to sell River. At the beginning, I was, I was a little teary-eyed and, and I go, oh, I, I hate horses, you know, I'm being sarcastic. And everyone in the comments was like, oh my gosh, she said she hates horses, what the heck? was sarcasm, but whatever. So, you gotta have a tough heart if you're sarcastic, like me. The next thing is have a good, high quality, interesting, eye-catching thumbnail. So a thumbnail is a picture of your video. Um, you can upload your own, or you just have to pick one from the three options they give you, like in the beginning, middle, and end of your video. When you first start out your channel, they might not let you pick your own thumbnail until you gain a couple of views and subscribers. But just make sure it's interesting and eye-catching, not too busy. Make sure it showcases what your video is going to be, because people look at that and they say, Ooh, that picture looks cool. I'm going to click on this video and watch it. So that's very important. Along with your video title, same lines apply. Make sure it's interesting, make sure it's exciting, make sure people read it and say, Ooh, I want to watch that video. Utilize your cards and end screens. So if you guys don't know what these are, cards are the little thingies that go up here. Or maybe it's over here, I don't remember. I, this, it flips and I don't know, I'm confused. But it's a little thing that pops up that is a link to a video. So you can put those, five of them in a video at once. So, you know, if someone's watching your video and they're getting bored and then something pops up here that's really exciting and they want to click on it, they do. So make sure you put, put those in your videos. Also, end screens are the two little, you know, videos or one little video or whatever I do too. But uh, links to other videos that people can click on and subscribe to your channel and all those things. So be sure to use those because you want to get your videos out to people. You want, you want people to see them. So give them the opportunity. The next thing is post a variety of videos. There's a lot of equine YouTubers I know that post like literally the same video every time and it's not it's not the same video but it's the same type of video and i just i just it's it's boring for me i like every single one of your videos is like basically the same thing it's not original and it's not you know it's not fun for me so make sure that your videos are very different and unique or people will get bored with your channel because honestly youtube is all about pleasing the people the same for me this is for you guys my haters are my motivators. The next thing is post regularly. Uh, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> I typically post once, sometimes twice a week, depending on my horse's situation, if my horse is on stall rest or you're getting surgery and then there's three videos in like three days. You know, it just kind of depends. But as long as you're not, you know, posting videos over and over and over again and then just stop for a long time, people will unsubscribe, people will get bored with you. Don't post like a thousand videos each day. Make sure you spread them out. Now, before actually posting your video and making it go public, make sure you watch it all the way through once. Which guys, let's be real here. I'm telling you this, but I never do it, like ever. That's why on a lot of my videos, there's little screw ups, but I'm the epitome of lazy. But y'all still love me, so it's fine. So just to make sure 
you don't have any little screw ups. Watch it through once all the way. I, I do my best to do it, but sometimes I don't. And then I screw up and then the next video I post, I make sure that I watch it all the way through. The next thing would be study other videos and other channels that you like and, and learn from them. Not, not copy them, not recreate them, but just learn from them, which I didn't do until after I started YouTube because honestly, I don't, I don't even know why I started YouTube. I never even watched equine YouTubers before I started YouTube. I do now, but I don't know. So just, I watch lots of other equine YouTubers videos and learn from it. You know, I watch a channel I like and I learn from them or I watch a channel I don't like and I learn from them and I don't repeat their mistakes or their things that I'm not a huge fan of. That doesn't mean go and hate on other channels at all. I, there's no a question YouTube channel that, you know, I hate completely with all of my heart. You know, you don't you don't want to be like that. People don't like watching videos of people like that. So next thing is really important and happens to everyone at some point in their life is hate. So you really try your very very best to ignore those comments, as everyone will all there will always be those people. And I mean, there's really nothing you can do about it. The horse world is a very very judgy place. There's very judgy people. Everyone thinks everything should be done this way or this way or this way, and everyone thinks different. So. You can't, you can't put yourself, put your whole equine life out there and assume that everyone's going to like everything that you say, everything that you do. There's going to be a lot of people that aren't open-minded at all and there's going to be a lot of uneducated people out there that are watching your channel. Um, most of them are there to learn, but some of them are there because they think they know everything and they think you're a abuser and you're trying to kill your horse constantly, which is obviously why I'm doing. You guys think that I'm filming videos of my horse, but I'm actually filming videos of me trying to kill my horse every day because I hate him. Like what? What's, what is wrong, what is? You just gotta stay positive. You gotta ignore those comments. Also, if you get them, don't reply to them. Just don't, because there are some people that you just, there's, it's gonna make it worse, I promise. Just gotta ignore them and let your haters be motivators. I already said that in this video, but I'm going to say it again. But you know what? Y'all haters are sitting here watching my video, watching my ads, so I'm still getting money off it, so it's okay. Okay? You keep on hating. You keep on doing it because it's fine for me. And one of the last things is don't forget to interact with your subscribers. If people comment on your videos, like it or heart it or comment on it, whatever, just, just be sure that you... Because it makes people feel special and, and it makes, I mean, I get a lot of comments. I rarely reply to any of them, but I like and read every single comment every single time on every single video. And um, if it's a comment with a question, I usually don't like it because I feel bad because I'm like, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't answer this question because I get this question a thousand times and it would take me a whole week to answer all the questions I get on just one YouTube video. But I try my best and I, I interact a lot better on Instagram. YouTube is kind of hard. But just do your best to make sure that your, you know, your followers aren't going unnoticed. And the last and final thing of becoming a YouTuber. Have fun. I know that sounds like cheesy and weird or whatever, but honestly, have fun. Because if you're not having fun, your subscribers aren't having fun. And it's like, wh why, what, are you, what are you even doing then? But if this is something you will enjoy and something that you want to try out, it is definitely possible. Anybody and everybody can do it. So, and it, it's honestly really fun. So I would highly recommend it. And yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. I know, another talking video. Blah. But this was a very highly requested video. And I love you guys, so I will give you what you ask for. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys liked it. Please tune in for fun writing videos, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye!